Hello Glamour Ghouls and welcome back. Today I am bringing you a much overdue vlog from September slash early October of, of 2023 when I took my 30th birthday trip to Sleepy Hollow. I have been really excited to share this vlog footage with you, so I really hope you enjoy coming along on this trip with me. Before we jump in, I do want to mention that we have a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is brought to you by Scentbird. I was so excited when Scentbird reached out because I have been on a perfume and scent journey over the last couple of months. I have been wearing the same perfume for years. Years. <laughs> As in, I smelled it for the first time in a Teen Vogue sample. <laughs> years. <laughs> So I've been wanting to branch out and find something a bit more mature and that just fits my style now. I really think that scent can be kind of the final detail of a good outfit. You all know I love to dress to express how I'm feeling on any given day and I feel like scent can be that final accessory that really pulls an aesthetic together. So I've really been enjoying experimenting with that but as you know if you have ever experimented with your personal scent it can be very expensive. Have you ever bought uh, an entire bottle of perfume and then worn it for a few days and realized that you actually didn't like it at all? So how do we avoid this happening? Well, that is where Scentbird comes in. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try new designer fragrances each month for just $17. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply to try out before deciding if you want to buy a full-size bottle. They have both perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. And some of these fragrances can cost up to $150. Some of them are even $300 to $500. So I wanted to share with you what I picked out. I'm very very excited about both of these. So the first one is Milk by Commodity and I have been really interested in Commodity fragrances. I recently got to sample Velvet by Commodity which Scentbird also has available. They just do a really beautiful job with their scents. So this one has notes of cashmere woods, musk, tonka bean, marshmallow, and amber. It specifically has a skin musk note, which I'm noticing I tend to lean towards in scents. It just smells like when you give someone you love a hug and you get that kind of scent that's just their natural odor. It's that smell and it's really sweet and nice. I also love anything with an amber base note. As a rule in the past, I've kind of leaned more floral and fruity, usually more bright scents that are kind of citrusy. So this scent with the mahogany and the amber is just, is a lot smokier and warmer than I normally lean. And I'm really, really liking this a lot. This other one I picked kind of on a whim and I'm obsessed with it. This is Father Figure by Fleur and it has notes of fig, cassis buds, jasmine, dew, vanilla Madagascar, and sandalwood. It's still a green scent, which I tend to be drawn towards, but it's a lot warmer and it has almost a jamminess to it, which I really like for the winter. I have actually been wearing this one out the last couple of days and it has a lasting power. I can still smell it on me, but it's not overpowering it all. It's a beautiful scent and honestly once I run out of this I may be investing in a full-size bottle because I really really like the scent. I really encourage you to try something new with your personal fragrance. Something I really like to do is use a new scent when I'm traveling somewhere so that whenever I wear that scent in the future it reminds me of being in a place that I love visiting. Regardless of why you choose to do it, I highly encourage you play with your personal fragrance. It is such a fun way to change up your style. So make sure you click the link in my description box or scan this QR code to check out Scentbird's website and use my code MONSTER at checkout for 55% off your first month. That makes the first month just about $8 and that is a deal you cannot beat. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take a look at Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> Hello and good morning, Glamour Ghouls, and welcome back to Salem. <laughs> if it is your first time here, my name is Midge Munster, and on this channel we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. 
and right now we are on a very spooky birthday trip for my 30th. We are back in Salem. If you watched the vlog back in April from my spring trip to Salem, uh, I made a mention that I could not wait to get back and wanted to try to come back and experience it in the fall. And here we are. Very specifically, this is a trip to go to Sleepy Hollow, but because they are so close together, I had to stop back in Salem for a few days to enjoy it. We are staying with Kim and Mike who own Nocturne. If you remember me talking about Nocturne in my first vlog, um, it was my favorite shop that I visited here in Salem and Kim and I really hit it off after after I left. <laughs> and they were so kind as to open their home to us. So first of all, I, you can get a glimpse of what's happening here. It's, absolutely stunning. This house is 216 years old. It's gorgeous. And Kim and Mike are just so amazing. <laughs> we had such a, an awesome night with them last night. We got in kind of late and we went to dinner. I went back to Bella Verona because I'm obsessed with that restaurant. And they had a pumpkin ravioli on the menu for fall and it was in incredible. <laughs> and then Kim and Mike let us take a nighttime tour of Nocturne while it was closed and it was so magical. If you remember last time when I went to Nocturne, I was so in love with the store and so just like immersed in it when I was there that I forgot to film <laughs> inside and I felt so mad at myself when I got home that I had no footage of this store. So I was very excited to be able to film in there um, at night when no one was inside and really capture uh, all the feelings and the details of the shop. So I'm going to throw that footage here just so you can experience that. So today is our first full day in Salem. Uh, I'm with Taylor. He has never been to like the New England area at all. So I'm really excited to show him around. I'm also really happy we came in the spring because we got to experience the town when it was quiet and kind of had a lot of the shops and things to ourselves. So Salem is already bustling right now. It's September 28th. 
there's a lot going on. It is the harvest full moon tonight. This year is the 30th anniversary of the release of Hocus Pocus. So also I think people are like flocking to Salem for that as well. So the town is already bumping even though it's uh, just late September. So I'm very glad that I already kind of got to like do everything. So now we just get to kind of walk around and enjoy the energy of Salem in fall. We have some plans with friends later back here at the house, but until then, we're just gonna go wander and enjoy everything the city has to offer. And I'm gonna take you with me, so let's go. On this first day, I just showed Taylor around the main area. Uh, the commons were setting up for their haunted happenings market, and we walked and went to Red's for breakfast. I got my corned beef hash, my favorite. Uh, then we just kind of went bopping around the most popular areas in Salem, the town hall, the witch house. Um, one of the most exciting parts about this trip for me was just seeing Salem decorated for Halloween or at least starting to. Uh, that's not something I had gotten the chance to experience before and it was really fun. Even the witch house already had out its pumpkins. Then Kim had suggested that we hit up Witch City Thrift, which is just across from the witch house because they had gotten in a lot of vintage Halloween and hot damn, she was not lying. They had so many amazing vintage decorations and blow molds. I could have spent a billion dollars in here if I had had a way to get all these things home. They had so many blow molds that I had been looking for and honestly at pretty great prices. I've never seen this many in one location. Probably my favorite thing I found was this spider disc blow mold and also a little spider jack-o'-lantern guy. I had never seen either of those things before. Then we headed to the wharf to visit the ossuary. Now this was closed the entire time I was here in the spring and I was so upset and I'm so glad I finally got to go because oh my god this is probably my favorite clothes shopping experience in Salem. Uh, so many gorgeous gowns and accessories. This is definitely your place for elevated goth fashion and I blame them for the fact that I have now fully entered my gown goth era. I got to have my very own little like movie montage fashion moment in the dressing room trying on all these brands that I follow online but have never gotten to try on in person like Wax Poetic Clothing and Blackwood's Castle. It was so much fun and it was a really good experience because they carry a wide array of sizes. They are plus inclusive which is so exciting as a plus size ghoul that is not always the case in boutiques like this. After a very eventful day, we started walking back to Kim's house and Taylor had the experience of a life-changing moment right before my eyes. <laughs> Swatch spotting. What does it mean for you to meet your idol? <laughs> it's incredible. That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> All right, so we spent the day just kind of walking around. I didn't film a ton, honestly, because we, a lot of it is stuff I showed you in the April vlog. Like I mentioned before, Taylor had not been to Salem, so I spent a lot of the day just showing him the witch house and the ropes mansion and just walking down Essex Street and doing kind of the, the norm. We went to the wharf for a bit, it was really nice. So now we are back at Kim's and like I mentioned earlier, we have some plans with friends tonight. So back in April when I did my deviled egg video, which was right around when I came to Salem, <laughs> a long time internet friend of mine, Mandy, uh, some of you might know her as Hagwitch on Instagram. She messaged me and was like, next time you're in Salem, you have to make us these deviled eggs because we are like egg people and John is a big Miracle Whip fiend. <laughs> and so we kind of had this 
joke that I was going to make eggs the next time I was in Salem. <laughs> so I texted her a few weeks ago. I was like, hey, I'm going to be back in Salem. When are we making eggs? And it's evolved into this weird egg night situation. <laughs> so I'm making eggs for a whole bunch of people. And Mandy told me she had an egg sweater. So now there's egg apparel involved. And I was like, well, I have to have egg apparel. <laughs> so I found this <laughs> egg beret on Amazon and ordered it. And I had these devil horns from my Halloween costume last year. <laughs> and I'm gonna just hot glue these onto the beret and be a deviled egg. <laughs> So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna make some eggs and uh, I will try to film a little bit of the egg night shenanigans. <laughs> it is a full moon, it's a harvest moon, so it's sure to be a, a weird evening. <laughs> I'm very excited. So let's, uh, let's make this hat, shall we? <laughs> DIY Halloween costumes really can be that simple. <laughs> In true me fashion, I was having so much fun that I forgot to film literally anything on egg night, but here are some photos. Um, this night was so fun and everyone enjoyed my deviled eggs, so it was a hit. The next morning we were up bright and early to go visit the Hocus Pocus house, Max and Danny's house, and I was ecstatic. This was so surreal to see it in person. I will say if you want to see this, it is definitely off the path in Salem, so you'll want to take an Uber ride if you're headed there. We went and had some quick breakfast at Fountain Place, which was delicious if you're looking for a Benedict. And I finally got to try Odd Meter Coffee. Delicious, delicious coffee. If you need a quick caffeine fix, this is your spot. Now for a little more shopping. Kim had told me that I had to get to Deal Marcus. Uh, she had told me about this when I was there in the spring and I just didn't get there, but oh my gosh, she was so right. This store is gorgeous. It is full of tea and candles all made in house. This store is in an old bank, which is very cool. Uh, and it features the original vault. You can still take a peek inside if you're lucky like me. They also have lots of great art and antiques, so you will definitely want to stop in. On my walk back, I stopped to admire the Gardner Pingree house. It's right on Essex Street, and if you've listened to our Clue episode of Ghouls Night and Pod, you know the full story behind the supposed rumors that this house inspired the Parker brothers to make the famous game. And as I continued my walk, a miracle occurred. Goodnight Fatty was open. I wanted to try their signature fatties again when I was here in the spring. They were always closed, so I was so excited. I ran in and grabbed a few and ran home to share them with Taylor. We've got our fatties, I believe. That's what they're called. Taylor's laughing. That's what they're called. <laughs> Um, so I believe we have like a puppy chow, snickerdoodle, a brownie of some sort, like a cosmic brownie, and a peanut butter smash patty thing. I don't know, we'll know for sure back when I watch back the footage what these were, but let's try them. Which one do you want to try first? Uh, a cosmic brownie. We should do the chocolate in the middle, right? To split up the other two, kind of like. Okay, this is the like puppy chow one. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Ooh, gooey. Hmm. 
Mmm. Mm. That's good. The that texture is, good. is really good. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the like brownie, smashy one. Mm. Okay. I really like the texture. No. Yeah. It's cakey. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Okay. This is the one I think I'm most excited about. This is a like peanut butter. Uh, that, it looks like there's butterscotch maybe involved. Mmm. Hmm. Good job, fatty. <laughs> That's what people say to me. <laughs> For our evening excursion, we finally made it out to the Black Vale. This is another can't miss location, but it's definitely an Uber ride away, so keep that in mind, but worth every penny. This shop and tattoo parlor is absolutely stunning. This is a full immersive experience and they have curated such a beautiful shop. They have everything from art to creepy antiques, to books, to clothing, to crystals. Plus, if you're looking for the perfect witchy photo op, this is your place. I finished off this evening with a dinner at Turner's Seafood with some of my best gal pals who were also in town from Kansas City for my friend Nellie's 30th birthday. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> we 
we ended the night with a ghost tour of Salem, which, to be frank, was just okay, but we still had a lot of fun. Now it was finally time to pack up the rental car and head to Sleepy Hollow! Once we got into town, we had lunch at Little Bee's Burgers and Bites. And this place really surprised me. I didn't think it wouldn't be good, but it was good good. <laughs> I built my own burger and I really, really enjoyed my meal here. Then it was time to head out to Sunnyside. So this is Washington Irving's home. And let me tell you, this home and its scenic view of the Hudson River is just stunning. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't film inside the house, but I highly recommend you go take this tour. It was amazing. I learned so much about Irving and his life, and they have his original desk inside, which is freaking amazing. We stayed until after dark for the live telling of the legend, and to my knowledge, they only do this on certain dates during late September into October, so be sure to check before you go and book your tickets ahead of time. Over the horse's haunches, past the sway back, hung to the neck, right below that hammerhead. And Ichabod squeezed gunpowder so tight, he almost popped out the cloud horse's low good eye. Gunpowder run! But up, but up, but up, but the goblin gave. Whoa! And then a beacon of hope appeared in the form of the venerable old Dutch church. If I could just make it to the bridge by the church, I'd say, Gunpowder run! We also got to see the Headless Horseman himself, so that alone made the experience worth the trip. The next morning I met up with Lindsay from It's a Charming Life for a tour led by Michelle of Sleepy Hollow Spellbound. And one of my lovely subscribers, Jade, was also on this tour by surprise, and that was really fun. This tour is led by the Sleepy Hollow Historical Society, and it is different than the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery Tour, and I'm so glad that Lindsay told me about it, because you get to see things that you would otherwise not get to see. Um, they showed us where the original Horseman's Bridge was, and the most incredible part of this was we got to go inside the old Dutch church. I was so excited, a lot of my footage in here is shaky, so I apologize for that, but this was a magical experience. Then we got to tour the old Dutch burial grounds in the churchyard, which is where all of the stones that inspired the legend are located. Like this one, which is attributed to giving Irving the idea for the name Katrina von Tassel. So historically what we know to be true is November 17, 1777, the Van Tassel Farms, both Petrus's and Cornelius's, they're burnt uh, by the a British raiding party. You know, they're taking the cattle, they want everyone to vacate so they can grab all their stuff. Now, that is historic fact. It really happened. It's true. Here's where the legend comes in. According to the family, the story's been passed down for hundreds of years. According to the family, Elizabeth Van Tassel, when they're, you know, they're the home, the farm is burnt and they're vacated. She realizes that her baby Leah is not safely out of the house. She tries to go back in and is pushed out by the flames. She is horrified. All of a sudden, a Hessian soldier beckons to her, shows her around the house a hollowed out log where he safely rescued the baby. She never forgot the kindness of this Hessian soldier that rescued her baby. So when a... Um, Hessian soldier is found, a headless Hessian soldier from the Battle of White Plains is found. Um, she wants this Hessian soldier buried. The stones in this part of the cemetery are so old and absolutely stunning. 
We saw this monument for a woman who is believed to have been the basis of Katrina's personality, and even the stone that may have inspired Brom Bones. If you are specifically wanting a tour that highlights the lore of Irving's legend, be sure you take this one on top of the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery tour. Then we took a walk back into the cemetery to see the bridge that is now thought of as the Horseman's Bridge. Now, the bridge that inspired Irving is no longer standing, but in the legend, Irving describes the route of the Albany Post Road as being on the east side of the old Dutch church, which would put Ichabod's collision with the horseman inside what is today's Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. The bridge is a great place to stop, admire the waterway, and get a photo with real Legend of Sleepy Hollow vibes. Or, if you like, live out your very own horseman fantasy. Clippity clap! Yes, do it! <laughs> we took a bit of a stroll around the cemetery itself and visited Irving's grave. This cemetery is stunning and huge. You could literally walk forever and never see it all. After this, Lindsay, Taylor, and I headed back into town and saw some of the horseman decor out and about. Then we headed to grab some dinner at the famous Horse Feathers. Be sure to grab a bite here for beautiful ambiance and the opportunity to eat something called the Ichabod Cod. Finally, the night I had most been looking forward to, the night of the great jack-o'-lantern blaze. This was one of the main reasons I wanted to come to the Hudson Valley for my birthday. If you are not familiar, the great jack-o'-lantern blaze is a walk-through jack-o'-lantern art experience with more than 7,000 carved pumpkins in glorious vignettes. This was honestly just magical. That's the only word for it. My one complaint would be that if I could have changed my plans, I would have gone on a different night so it wasn't quite so crowded. We went on Saturday and it was just so packed. We couldn't fully appreciate all the scenes, but it was still gorgeous, or should I say gorgeous? <laughs> I would highly recommend that if you live in the Hudson Valley area or the Long Island area, they both have one of these jack-o'-lantern blazes and you definitely need to check it out if you haven't already.
And now for the final and my favorite day of the trip. This day was all about history and tours, so I was living my geek dream. <laughs> we started our morning at the Lindhurst Mansion, which some of you may recognize from HBO's The Gilded Age, or if you're a nerd like me, the original Dark Shadows movies from the 70s. What is really cool about Lindhurst is that because it was a summer home, it was meant to be left furnished. Families didn't take their things with them when they sold it to the next owner. So almost all of the furniture in this house is original to it, and it is stunning. As are the grounds. Again, the beautiful views of the Hudson River just don't stop. I unfortunately, again, was not able to film inside very much, but I would highly recommend you check out this tour. And then the Armour Steiner Octagon House. Y'all, this is one of the coolest places I have ever been and I have not stopped thinking about it. This pink octagonal house is chalked to the brim with glorious architectural details, a matching birdhouse out back, and a gorgeous matching greenhouse setup. It is a beautifully decorated Victorian home and is the only known fully domed octagonal residence in the United States. In the 19th century in America, octagonal houses started popping up all over after the publication of the book The Octagon House, A Home for All by Orson Squire Fowler. Now, Fowler was a phrenologist, which studies the shape of the skull and how it pertains to personality. And while this pseudoscience is problematic now, it is definitely an inspiration for this domed home and others like it. This privately owned home has been lovingly restored to its original Victorian splendor and is full of plenty of curiosities and haunted tales to match. There's even a few ghosts in the attic. One of my favorite parts of this tour was the Egyptian Revival Room. If you've listened to my podcast, you know that Victorians had a fascination with Egypt and mummies, so seeing a real-life example of this was fascinating. The painting, the furniture in here, all the details were just stunning. But the best part of our visit, without a doubt, was that they had Ryan Matthew Cohn's exhibit, Cabinet of Curiosities, on display. And this was a wild collection of oddities and curiosities like I have never seen, and it was so exciting to get to explore this as a part of our tour.
The Armor Steiner house is just indescribable. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it, and I'm sure I never will again. I cannot recommend that you visit this place enough. Be sure to book your tour tickets ahead of time and check to make sure that the house is open to tours during your stay in the Hudson Valley. The rest of this last day was spent with my amazing friend Bianca, who lives in the area. We went and visited the Sleepy Hollow sign, very important, and then we went together for a lantern lit tour of the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. This was incredible. Seeing the graves at night and experiencing the cemetery after dark was just magic. And viewing the world by lantern light only, I definitely understood how people thought they saw ghosts all the time. This was spooky, but so fun. And we got to go into the receiving vault, another Dark Shadows filming location. This was the perfect button on my Sleepy Hollow experience, and I honestly cannot wait to visit again someday. So those were my adventures in Salem and Sleepy Hollow for my 30th birthday. It was such a lovely trip. We saw so many amazing things. I got to meet up with so many lovely people. Retrospectively, there was so much going on in September and October this past year that that trip felt a little bit like a blur. So I'm glad I got this opportunity to watch everything back and remember because I feel like it just went by in a flash and I didn't really have time to decompress afterward and appreciate it. Before we wrap up today, I did want to do a quick little haul. You know, I love showing y'all what I bring back from trips, especially when I get to shop with cool small businesses and things while I'm out in the world. So I'm going to start with Nocturne in Salem, owned by my friends Kim and Mike. This shop, y'all, if you are going to Salem, do not miss Nocturne. I can't say it loud enough. I'm so glad I finally filmed in Nocturne so y'all could really get the, the full experience. Nocturne is one of two or three shops to me in Salem that are your, like, cannot miss. If you're in Salem for one day and you only have a limited amount of time to shop, go to Nocturne. I love all the shops in Salem. I love Emporium 32, love Vamp Fangs. I love all the Main Street boutiques that are kind of classically witchy, but Nocturne to me is just doing something that no one else in Salem is doing, which is like a highly curated dark aesthetic experience. It's something so outside of just the general witch thing that's happening everywhere else in Salem, which I love, but this is just something different and it's really well done. Okay, I'm done ranting. <laughs> Go to Nocturne. I'm going to show you um, what I got because that was where I spent the majority of my shopping funds. So first things first, you know me, you know I'm going to get a purse or a handbag. I love handbags. I have enough of them, but I can't stop. I saw this beautiful one at Nocturne. This is from Ectogasm um, brand, and it is this really beautiful embroidered spider web. Just a little handbag with like a clasp like that. It has kind of a vintage feel to it, which I really like. It's got an interchangeable strap, so it's got the long chain, and then it has more of like a short hand chain. And this comes in several colors. They have it in um, kind of like a cranberry ox bloody color. And uh, funny enough, Penny went to Salem not too long after me and went to Nocturne and got this in the cream color. So we have, <laughs> we both have this, but it's just really pretty. And it's a beautiful size for like an evening bag. I don't have a lot of smaller bags. A lot of mine are the big kitschy ones. So I really, really liked this a lot. And you know me, if it has a spider web on it. I'm probably going to buy it. Speaking of which, <laughs> um, I got a couple little postcards that I specifically got with the intent of framing them. So a lot of what you're going to see in this haul is artwork because something I was working on curating and collecting while I was on this trip was finding art pieces for a large gallery wall that I am planning in my living room, which you will see in just a couple weeks. We are coming up on the living room grand makeover reveal. Um, so you'll see some of these pieces again very soon. But I fell in love with this artist, Alyssa Thorne. Um, I just love the 
light and contrast of her pieces. And so I got this postcard version of this beautiful spider web in dark florals. And I don't know if you can see the little spider down here, but I just loved the color palette of this, very autumnal. I believe she has this in like full size prints as well, but I like getting these smaller cards as a way to have tinier pieces of art to fit in between larger pieces because it's very easy when most people sell their prints in like an eight by 10 size to suddenly have a huge wall of large prints and no variety and no room to put anything. So I like getting these postcards or greeting cards that have really pretty art as a smaller option. So I also grabbed this greeting card. This is Janet Hill Studio and uh, the piece is called Escape from Phantom Manor. It's technically a Halloween card. It says have a fright on Halloween night, but I love the art. It reminds me of old pulp romance novels with a woman running away from a big scary house. It's so pretty. And I liked the color palette of this a lot too. I love the pop of red in her dress and all the scary phantoms. Look how creepy that one's face is. <laughs> it's got scary trees. I just loved it. And I like the, um, I like that because it's a card, it's in a, an interesting shape. I thought that was really fun. And then the last piece of art I got from Nocturne, I am obsessed with this piece and I almost didn't get it. They had them out and the first day I was there and I came back a couple days later to buy my stuff and it was gone. And I was like, no. <laughs> um, and then they got it restocked, thankfully. So I did end up getting it. This one is a little different from what I would normally go for. And I don't, and it doesn't say the artist's name on here, but I know I got a shot with their name um, in it. So I'll, I'll pop that here. But this, again, the, the lighting, the use of directional light. So as you can see, it's a crystal ball, a candelabra, a jack-o'-lantern, a Ouija board, all the best things, um, some books, and then a black cat, which this is why I say it's a little bit different for me. I tend to not buy art that has cats on it. I'm not really a cat person. I don't have anything against cats. <laughs> I just think like the art in your home should really speak to who you are as a person. And I am a dog person. I had cats growing up, but I'm very allergic to them. And so I just tend to not um, have a lot of cat motifs in my house, but I fell in love with this piece and how you can just barely see the Ouija board under the cat and the jack-o'-lantern glowing. I just thought this was kind of like a perfect homage to all the things I love about October and Halloween. So I had to get that. So beautiful. All right, I've got a few more things from Nocturne. The last piece for the gallery wall is this gorgeous Victorian hand clip. I really, really loved this. I love the little wrist cuff and it just clips like that. Um, I thought this would be a different way to display a piece of art on the wall. Obviously I'm going to be working with a lot of frames and things, but I want interest and depth and variation on this wall so that it looks a little haphazard in some ways. And I thought having a piece of art just clipped to the wall would be very cool and would give me a really nice opportunity to cycle out seasonal pieces. So I was really excited about that. This is brass, <laughs> it's really nice. And uh, the details on it are just so pretty. And then lastly from Nocturne, I bought a couple of things from one of my new favorite companies of 2023. I went from owning nothing by them to buying my first purchase with them in early September. And now I think I've made upwards of six or seven <laughs> purchases with them. Um, this is Graveyard Wanders. They are a candle company. I absolutely adore their work. Their scents are incredible. They do sculptural candles. They do beautiful tapers in lots of different colors. So I bought these through Nocturne mostly because this is a scent I had wanted um, and I didn't have to pay shipping because I was in store. So I got a tin candle in the Haunted Manor scent. Mm, I love this scent. Let's see. Okay, so the candle didn't say on it what the scent profile was, so I wanted to look it up. 
uh, on their website. So Haunted Manor, notes of smooth velvet, a soft smell of wood, warm vanilla, and a hint of musk. And this was part of their Halloween like drop. So I think they bring this back in the fall. It does have just a really mild but complex smell that just smells old in the best way. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I think it's that kind of velvety, um, musky smell. Oh, I love it. So I got that in the container candle and in the room mist because I like it so much. And as we've already talked about in this video, I think scent is such an important part of creating a full aesthetic. So I was really excited to add these to my living room. Okay, so that is it from Nocturne. Then we have a few more things from Salem before we move on to Sleepy Hollow. I just keep buying <laughs> the different... Uh, planchettes from the Salem Witch Board Museum. This is, as you know, my other favorite place in Salem. And every time I go there, I feel like I, I have to buy something. So I got another planchette because I have one displayed in my office space where I like edit and things, but I kind of wanted one for the living room as well. So just grabbed another white one, which these do glow in the dark, which is very fun. And then I grabbed just a couple small things from the Black Veil because I loved it there so much. I could have gone crazy in there with art, antiques, all kinds of stuff, but we were still on the first leg of the trip and I didn't want to you know, bog down with a bunch of stuff before I went to Sleepy Hollow. I know I'll be back to Salem. I know I'll be back to Black Veil, but I did get a cute little sticker of a snail whose shell is the witch house and it says the Black Veil. This is the art of the brothers who own that tattoo studio and shop. So I thought that was a good little souvenir. Also, don't ask me why, but I did get... <laughs> This is probably the weirdest thing I bought. I did get a vintage like antique coffin nail. I don't know. It just, it spoke to me and it was like $2. And I thought, that's sick. I want that. <laughs> so I have an old coffin nail now. Something for my personal cabinet of curiosities. <laughs> and lastly from Salem, I got a couple of teas at Deal Marcus and Company, which Again, if you're gonna go just a couple places in Salem, go to Deal Marcus. It is such a weird shop, like in the sense that it's tucked away. I probably would not have found it on my own if it had not been for Kim telling me to go there. It's up in the old bank. You have to go kind of up these stairs. It doesn't necessarily look like it would be a shop. It's kind of right by Reds. And oh my gosh, as you saw from the footage, gorgeous inside so cool um they mostly have like teas and candles and things but there's also a lot of great antiques and art the employees in there were so nice and so good to me and i got to smell sample a bunch of teas i ended up getting um some small samples of a few so i got cottage comfort and blood orange black tea i have really been in my tea era for the last couple years. I mean, I've always liked tea, but lately I just can't hardly finish off my evening without a cup of tea while I read. And uh, that's on being 30, I guess. <laughs> but I'm very excited about these. They are amazing. And then this is probably the thing I'm most excited about that I purchased on my trip. So one of the employees at Deal Marcus named Ash they are an artist and the shop owner recently um, gave them some space to put their art out in the shop. And what was so fun is when I first came in, Ash recognized me from the channel. So Ash, if you are by chance watching right now, hello, good to see you. Um, but what was so funny is that I was already like staring at this art and was just like enamored by it. And the other employee, which I believe her name was Michaela, I hope I'm getting that right, but she kind of pulled me aside and was like, you know, Ash would never tell you this themselves, but that's their art. And I was like, no freaking way. So this is just freaking stunning. Um, it is a photography piece that 
is done to look very much like an old daguerreotype or tin type piece of photography. Um, the camera isn't even doing it justice because it has in person this ghostly quality that looks transparent and translucent. Like it looks like you could just reach back into the photo and it has this haze about it. I don't know. It's really <laughs> freaking cool in person. It's cool here too, but I wish you could like be in person and look at this. And then it came in this gorgeous metal matted frame. So I just fell in love with this immediately. It was like one of those things where I picked it up and didn't even think about, I didn't care how much it was. I was like, I'm taking this with me. And then it was so cool because I met the artist and I got to take a picture with Ash with their art. And uh, I'm just stoked about this piece. I cannot wait to have this hanging in my living room. I think it's just haunting and gorgeous and it's a very nice like memento mori, you know? Anyway, Ash, you are so talented. I will put their Instagram handle here so you can keep up with their artwork if you want. All right, so now we are in the final little stage here of things I got in Sleepy Hollow. I will now be doing a category of things I bought that have the Headless Horseman on them because <laughs> what else do you go to buy in Sleepy Hollow if not for uh, just endless Headless Horseman memorabilia? So first off, I have this little felted ornament of the horseman with his little arm up with his jack-o'-lantern head. I love that the horse has red eyes and looks spooky. There, that's kind of a better angle for you to see what's happening. It's kind of hard to read since it's a lot of black, but I just liked him and I thought he would be good for putting out at Halloween time. Next, I have a postcard. I got this at Sunnyside at Washington Irving's home. And uh, I kept seeing this rendition of Ichabod and the Horseman, and I just loved the color palette of it and the style of it. I thought it was really beautiful. So here is that art piece. And the back of it's actually really cute. It says postcard. <laughs> but I will likely be framing this and putting it on my wall. I also got this framed piece. This is a combination of what looks to be like a line of cut or block print of the graveyard. And then the frame and the horseman himself are a paper cut, like layered technique. It's really, really very cool. I just loved all the detail in it. And I like the just little splash of orange in the pumpkin and that it's otherwise, you know, very neutral. You could put this with any decor and it would go. But I like that it also has kind of a book illustrative feel. It looks like you would see it in a copy of Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So i um, very excited about that. So this last piece is obviously not the horseman. However, it is very Sleepy Hollow specific and I had to get this because as you saw in the footage, I got to hang out with Lindsay from It's a Charming Life, who I've been watching for a very long time. And uh, it was very exciting to meet her in person. Unfortunately, I did not get to meet her husband, Jonas. He was so busy uh, carving pumpkins and things for local events. So I did not get to hang out with both of them. But Jonas is a very talented artist and uh, they had one of his prints in a local shop that was the kind of uh, infamous Sleepy Hollow Scarecrow that is in the town square in Terrytown. And he stands in front of this clock tower type um, piece. I just thought this was really beautiful. I love the gravestones. And again, the color palette is so correct for a, a nice autumnal feel. So I had to get a piece of Jonas's art and then Lindsay brought this with her. It was so sweet. Jonas actually uh, gifted me a few pieces as well. So they gave me a couple of Sleepy Hollow postcards that Jonas has designed that have the horseman on them. And I love that they look like vintage, you know, Americana postcards, but spooky. So pretty. I love the art on this one, especially. And then they gave me a couple of these stickers with one of Jonas's original characters on there. So cute. So that's very exciting. I love having 
art done by people I know in my house. I just think that's so special when you can look at something and be like, wow, I know the person who created that. That's, <laughs> it's amazing. As a person with very little artistic ability in that way, I cannot like paint or draw. I think that is just like so incredible that people can picture something in their mind and translate it onto paper is like wild to me. And then last but certainly not least, I got a couple of things at the Armour Steiner house. If you could not surmise by that footage, that house is my Roman Empire. I have not stopped thinking about it since I went there. I want to go back. I want to see it at every season. I... I don't know what it was. I just became enamored with it and I wanted to bring a little piece of that home with me. So first I got this precious little tea towel, which I thought was appropriate because they were a tea family originally, um, but it has the house on it and just liked the subtle pinky cute design. And then lastly, I just got another couple of greeting cards that I really liked the art on. Um, one of them is a really pretty pink and blue phrenology head map <laughs> or chart, I guess. But I loved that the head is the color of the house. And as I mentioned in the footage, this was such a big part of how that house was designed. And then I loved this one. It's just an old photograph of the house in black and white, but I loved the framing of it with this kind of Victorian looking wallpaper behind it. Just thought that was beautiful. So again, I'll probably frame those as art as well. And I think that's everything. The only thing I didn't kind of keep in this pile to show you is I did get a Wonder Witch Boutique shirt in Salem at Nocturne the Mary Shelley's Monster Mash like festival shirt. I absolutely love that shirt. I have been wearing it religiously, which is why it is not in this pile of things to show you. But if you are not already familiar with Wonder Witch Boutique and her designs, definitely go check her stuff out. Please go follow and support as many of these lovely shops and artists on Instagram as you can. I will link as many as I can in the description box below for you. Thank you all so much for watching today. Thank you for your patience. I know this video is long overdue, but I'm excited to finally be sharing it with you. And I hope maybe I have inspired you to take your own trip to Salem or Sleepy Hollow. Thank you so much again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. As a reminder, if you would like to check them out and support this channel, you can click that link in the description box below or scan this QR code and use my code MONSTER for 55% off your first month. And as always, if you'd like to see more from me, you can subscribe to the channel before you leave today and check out the links in the description box below for my Instagram, Patreon, podcast, and more. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye. <laughs>